Welcome to an encounter with the Spirit, Word, and Prayer through the prolific apostolic and teaching ministry of Apostle Femi Lazarus, lead pastor of Sphere of Light Church Global. It is his vision to raise God's end time on. God has not called you to prove you are the best. He has not. As a leader, you are a broker of gift and talent. So, brace up for an experience. Thank you, Jesus. Let's lift our hands that our eyes are opened in this service. Our eyes are opened in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I will have to say many important things in a short while. Is that okay? Many, because God has told me what he wants to do. I want to look at the man called Moses. I want to look at his ministry. I want to look at his walk with God and his battles. The man called Moses, his ministry, his walk with God and his battles. Now we read this portion of the Bible, the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 7. We read that and I, I want us to fix our gaze on it again. Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 7. All right, we jump quickly to verse 22. Acts 7 from verse 22. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. And, and when he was full 40 years old, it came to his heart to visit the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptians. Why the Egyptian? For he supposed that his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand will deliver them, but they understood not. And the next day he showed himself unto them as they strove, and will have said them one again, saying, Sirs, you are brethren, why do you wrong one another? But he that did his neighbor wrong, trust him away, saying, Who made you a ruler or a judge of ours? Will you also kill me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses fled at his saying, and was a stranger in the land of Midian, where he begat two sons. Moses never became a fugitive for idleness. He became a fugitive for doing what his destiny requires. Okay? And one of the very important things, um, point I tried to drive home on Tuesday, is to show you that the presence of problem doesn't mean you have done something wrong. I want you to get comfortable with that. The fact that you are in trouble doesn't mean you are wrong. The presence of challenges doesn't mean you have gotten something wrong. When you get to certain aspect of your destiny, there will be revibrations. And you must get used to that. There will be. There will be reactions. The gate of hell will react. You will be checked out. The devil will react. It will react through men. It will react through people. There will be so much attempt to get you out. You know, I have people that will pray together every day. I told them, I can't remember two days ago or so, uh, or yesterday, that when you pray so well for so long, then stop. The devil will make sure you never pray so well again. When you pray so well, continue praying. Don't stop. Okay? Don't stop. Never take break on spiritual activities. It will be difficult to find your way back. It will wire frustrations, discouragement. And discouragement is a language you must understand how to cope with. It's going to try everything possible. Let's say, for instance, we agree that we're going to go on seven days dry fasting. And somebody did the seven days. In the course of doing the seven days, we were praying well, studying well, and doing all those things well. As long as you have touched the devil where it ought, he's going to try everything possible to make sure that you are never capable of praying again. If there was issue of addiction before, it will come in full force so that you can look at yourself and condemn yourself. Moses was not wrong. He was fulfilling destiny. Was he wrong? Can destiny make you a fugitive for 40 years? Yes, it can. He was in the wrong. Maybe talking about killing the Egyptian, me, I don't know. 
Probably he had seen that there was no other way to make the guy stop. But something was a rumbling. Sometimes you can feel a rumbling in, on your inside to go in a certain direction. Feel a rumbling. Nothing is wrong with you. There's something you have to bet in that direction. Is that okay now? And people can get you wrong for it. Get comfortable with that. 40 years of being a fugitive. Why? Because he was getting into destiny. Destiny is not easily bettered. The devil will come at you with everything that he has. He will use everything in his arsenal to fight you. He's going to get, he's going to fight you. And you must understand that the, the devil fights systematically. The devil is not dull. The devil is not dull. The devil is not dull. He fight our system. He fight in a way you'll be convinced that you should be fought. When the devil wants to deal with a person, the devil is not going to come at you in a way that you can easily tell that this is the devil. Think about this. Matthew 16. Jesus asking them, who do men say that I am? And then they said, um, some said you are Elias. Some said you are the, one of the prophets. Some said you are this. Some said you are John the Baptist. And he asked them, who do you say that I am? Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, you are Peter. And I say to you, on this rock of this revelation, I will build my church. The gate of hell will not withstand and prevail against it. Then Jesus went further to tell them how we should suffer and die. Then the devil came through the same one who has the revelation. When the devil fights, he fights through trusted hands. He fights behind the, behind the scene. That if, if I can get you to understand this, you will live your life every day seeing how the devil is poking his head through the windows of people's thoughts to bring you down. How he is speaking behind the scene, but it is their voice that is heard. You can hear the voice of men, but it is the words of the devil. We saw it when we were studying Jezebel. Psalms 11 from verse 2. Psalms 11 verse 2 says, For lo, the wicked bend their bows at the shadows, open to privily shoot at the upright in heart. You will hear things that will pierce your soul. But you are correct. Look at it. That he may privately, secretly, he likes to operate from the shadows. And that's why Paul had to one. In 2 Corinthians 10 from verse 3, he says, so see guys, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Why? For the weapons of our warfare, they are not canal. If you can see it, it is not the enemy. If you ask people here, why did you stop writing? Why did you stop preaching? Why did you stop singing? Why did you stop helping people? Why did you stop the things you stopped? Nobody can point at the devil in any black clothes. But they can point to men. Is it those people? No. It is still the devil. Using anything and anyone that is available to cause you pain. And it will not be driven home until the person is someone you have admitted to your heart. That's the most strategic thing for him to use against you. Ask yourself, why did I stop the things I stopped? Maybe you wrote something online and then somebody looked at you and criticized everything. And they are not doing anything. I say, I'm even done. Self. I'm done. I'm done. I'm not. Where's the book you started writing? You stopped it. Because somebody said something. How about the songs? You used to write songs. Many people should be in the choir, but they can't sing anymore. Because somebody said they sound like frog. Do you know how bad-mouthed people are? Eh? If Nigerians should eat the frustration of Nigeria on you, you, so you must be tough. You cannot be a wimp. You must be. Go watch football. 
No, that, um, that's not an advice. <laughs> I'm, that's an incomplete statement. So I'm going somewhere. You watch football. Thousands of people watching ball. Then one black player. And they are making monkey chant. Monkey. How can one person survive what over 50,000 people are saying? They have one name. They are just part of the crowd. You are the star player. Continue playing. You can't pause and react. Yeah. They don't know much. It's bandwagon effect. Continue. Nothing will happen. Anyone who takes the grandstand, the crowd will chant. But continue. You don't look at those making noise in the market. You look at the one you are buying things from. You have a role to play and the noise of people should not stop you. Don't I look at the pitch and I'm like, can't you guys see this is just one person? This is just one human being. And over 50,000 people making monkey chant. If you are going to stand in destiny, you have to be ready for opposition. Never measure your accuracy by peace. Don't use peace to measure your accuracy with God. Don't use peace. Certain aspect of your destiny is not peaceful. It's not. But you help people and take people out of the gutter and buff them and do this, they will bruise you. You still do the same thing again if that's your calling. If that's the reason why God is blessing you, you cannot say, I refuse to. Now I'm tired. I cannot. Do. No, you, you have to do it again. You, you think I like to hold the microphone every time. There are times I just want to drop the mic and go and cry. Oh, you, you, oh, you, you, are, you are surprised. Yes, they are surprised. Oh, I was born to preach. Oh, no. There are times I, I, I don't want to talk to anybody. They say, oh, you are a blessing. I say, that's your own business. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Don't even tell me. I'm... There are times I just want to drop the mic and focus on my life and cry and cry, then go back and hold the mic. I say, are you guys good? Say, you are good. Oh, yes. There are times I hold the mic, I come out, I say, God, anything that happens is your own business. You don't strengthen me now. You will not always feel cool fulfilling destiny. You have to get used to it. 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 You have to be strong. Say it loud and clear. I was born for such a time as this. Come on, say it again. Say it again one more time. You were. And I said during first service that Moses ran but he could have stayed. He probably should have. Those who are trying to push you away from your assignment won't fulfill it either. And it means there's going to be a vacuum. There will be a vacuum. You are not just matter that occupies space. You have a role. That if you can get this, you do have a role. Somebody, I, I read um, a story. I, I don't know whether it's true or not. Somebody was going to commit suicide and then said to himself, wrote it on a sheet of paper, I'm going to walk from the end of this bridge to the end of that bridge. I think he said if he meets someone that will smile at him or something, he's not going to commit suicide. Anyways, that one too, there's a matter there. How can you hang your life on somebody's mood? This life, everybody have their own battles. The earlier you accept it, the better it is. Somebody can talk to you anyhow. You know that you just woke up on the wrong side of the bed. You'll be all right later. So I won't carry the people are dumping their baggages on people. And if, if you keep receiving, <laughs> everybody's just talking to me. Nobody like me. Sure. Nobody like me. Do you like yourself? Everywhere I go to, everybody look down me. Everybody, people are looking down me. <laughs> are you down? The Israelites said, we saw the Anakites. 
We were like grasshoppers in our own sight. So were we in their sight. When you try to understand the way people perceive you, you will perceive you to perceive you the way you perceive yourself. So if the way people look at you is always affecting you, it's because of the conclusions you have about yourself. You probably think you are not fine. Oh, yes. Sometimes, you see, women just sit down inside car. They will not know that I said it. Just come and just... They, they don't, I don't know what... The, it's okay to adjust, but some of them don't feel the thing is okay. They just feel something. I don't know what I'm talking about. I just know I'm saying something that I know. Just, some of them, some, some fine person feels he's not fine or she's not fine. Because the boyfriend doesn't say she's fine. What you are looking at in the mirror is not enough. Somebody say, look at your big head. From that day, the fellow starts seeing big head. The person who spoke just had bad mouth. You know, somebody walked up to me years back. And the girl said to me, he said, Pastor Lazarus? I said, yes. He said, I just want to let you know, I don't like you. He said, I, I don't like you. I hate you. I lie. So I said, why? He said, everybody like you, so I, I, I'm different. <laughs> Are you seeing somebody's mentality? You now think that, oh God, he doesn't like me. Da. You are one person. Meanwhile, for you to make the effort to tell me is because you like me. I just told myself, life is not easy for the blind. So, Not everyone will appreciate you. You are not ice cream. Even ice cream has enemy. <laughs> Ask your neighbor, are you, are, are you ice cream? <laughs> Ask another neighbor, hey, you, you look like ice cream. <laughs> you must stand in the race of destiny, regardless of opinions, you must. That's leadership. That's your calling. I am so aware. I, I don't care where life has placed you. I'm so aware I'm not talking to ordinary people. I'm aware I'm talking to leaders. It does not appear what you shall become. So, regardless, whether you came here right, um, and just got a ride somewhere, someone just lifted you, I don't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't define who you are in the scheme of what God is planning. It doesn't. There are many of you who are seated here who in the next couple of months and years, you'll be the one holding the mic on a Sunday morning talking to people. God is calling you. You are not picking your phone calls yet. Well, you'll pick it. By fire or by thunder. It's just a matter of when. Will you pick it? Oh, yes. The team, I can never marry a pastor. No problem. Enjoy your Valentine pizza while you can. <laughs> Till they start putting marathon fasting for February 14th. <laughs> if it is destiny, you can't escape it. <laughs> it touched you. <laughs> if it is destiny, you can't escape it. Lift your hands. Say it loud and clear. I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid. Say it again. I will not be afraid. Say it again. I will not be afraid. Now put your hands down. When they stripped Jesus naked and they were slapping him, prophesy, who slapped you? Who do you think was doing that? It was the devil. Pilate said, I've not seen anything incriminating against this guy. And yet they would strip him naked and would slap him and say, prophesy. The devil wanted to frustrate him. And the Bible said later, if the princes of this world had known, they would never have crucified him. The devil is passing you through what he will regret. And that's what he's doing. Because he will be shocked that you will survive it. He will be shocked that not only will you survive it, you will help others survive it. I didn't hear amen to that. 
I said, not only will you survive it, you will help others survive it. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Let me say this to you. There are problems that will naturally start because the race of destiny has started. Yes. Come to Jesus. You will never know sorrow in your life. You never. Not lie. Not lie. Not lie. Not lie. Edit it. In this world, you shall have tribulation. In this world, you shall have tribulation. He didn't say you may have tribulation. You collect. Go ahead. Stay your neighbor. You, you shall collect. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. That, sorry. Wait, that doesn't sound scriptural. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, thou shall collect. <laughs> shall in thou? In this life, thou shalt surely collect. <laughs> we must raise believers that are battle ready. Tell your neighbor, I'm battle ready. Are you willing to walk alone in what God has called you to do? Without accolades from people, without discerning you, without knowing who you are. Nobody's celebrating, nobody's saying well done, you are doing mighty things. Nobody's seeing you. Are you ready to walk alone? That's how you know a leader. Nobody emerges suddenly. There are years of lonely paths before emergence. And somebody is in the middle of that right now. Singing, nobody's hearing it. Oh, yes. But I, I tell, I've, I've gone to shop, right? See, people tell me, ah, please buy my tape and listen to it. Hey, I'm not going to buy. <laughs> I would have tried, but now it's scary because I should buy. And if something is so good, Nigerians don't advertise it. <laughs> yes, so, so good, they'll just go and tell people that they know. Oh, yes. But does that mean that that person cannot be the one that will shake the world? I saw a video of one of the Nigerian young singers that went to an audition. The way they talk to the girl, you, 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 if you hear anything singing, you will almost drop it. Are they God? You went for an audition, they didn't pick you. The people you later audition. You are different. You are not a conformist. So you can be easily misunderstood. Stand and learn in the process. The problem is that we have placed people who are biased as the judge. <laughs> Let's leave that, please. Lift your hand. Say, I will never back down. Say it again loud and I will never back down. I will never back down. Let, see, let me tell you, you, you have to be tough. Somebody joined your organization. This HR has decided they will frustrate you out. And you too, you are getting frustrated. If somebody decides they will serve you frustration, don't eat. The person look at you, find every means to talk you down and make you feel like you are what you are not. Listen, rudeness is a lazy man's way of imitating strength. Let me explain. A rude man, a rude person is down. The only way they can relate with you is to drag you to their level. If you join them, they will beat you with experience. So that's why they need to talk you down. Then they now feel easy to talk to you. What are you? Because that's where they are. When you have knowledge, you see through these smoke screens. And people are talking, you understand. Okay, that's where you are. I'm not going to go there with you. I won't lose my joy. I won't lose my peace. I won't lose my stand. I stand in the calling of God for my life. Can I hear a big amen, amen. to that? Too many people have dropped what God has called them to do. Because of discouragement. You are going back to it. You are going back to it. 
Don't care if you made a mistake. You're going back to it. God has not closed your books. God has not closed your book. A Moses that was enjoying chicken in the palace of Pharaoh had more peace than a Moses in destiny. Fulfilling destiny is work. Just when you start, you have started. Okay? Once you start, you have started. Fulfilling destiny is work. Tell your neighbor, are you ready for the work? Are you ready for the work? Fulfilling destiny is work. It is demanding. Some of you had no problem, probably, until you became breadwinners. Then if you sneeze, they say it's because it's rich. If you cough, they say, don't mind that. Because her husband has money. Yeah, but you have to continue. And forge ahead. In the name of Jesus. Everything you have dropped. That God did not ask you to drop. Write them down. And say I go back to them. Write them down. Write them down. What did you stop doing that God didn't say you should stop? Write them down. Write them down. You used to be a philanthropist. You give to orphanage home. Give to widows. Give to But you have stopped. Because you met fraudulent people. Write it down. This year I'm returning. I'm returning. You used to be so kind till they dragged you with your kindness. Kindness in the mud. Write it down. I go back. I go back. I go back to it. Moses began his ministry quite late. Quite late. He started at 40. He allowed people's derogatory statements to take him back. Take him back. He had to start at, at um, 80 now. See, it doesn't matter whether you are coming late. Just make sure you do it. God knows how to shrink time for his own. Is that okay? He knows how to shrink time. It is better to even start late than not to start at all. Yes. Is that okay now? It is better to start late than not to start at all. You feel, oh, God was going to use me, but I've wasted time. I've spent so much time outside alignment. Now that you know alignment, start. Start, allow him help you. It will shrink time. I showed you that scripture. It will restore the years that the locust has eaten. You can't rewind time, but he said, I will. I will. Give you that illustration. In chemistry, there's something called chemical change and there's something called physical change. Physical changes can be either forward or backward reactions. They can be reversed. Okay? When you change the environment, they'll be reversed. When you freeze water or put it in the refrigerator, it becomes ice. But if you put it in a very hot environment, it can become water again. So some things can be reversed. But if you burn a sheet of paper too harsh, you can't have a paper again. We call it permanent changes. When you eat, it is digested, you pass it out, it's permanent change. It can't become yam or rice again. But God said, I will. Take not just what the locust has eaten, the years. When you look at your life, you are full of regret. Feel you have wasted 10 years. Maybe you wasted 5 years on a relationship. I will bring one. It will be the sum total of the years you've wasted and more. And I will restore it. That's the God we serve. So sometimes discouragement tells you it's too late. But God is saying, start. Tell your neighbor, start. Tell your neighbor again, start. There's someone here who should have a lifestyle blog where you write to encourage people and start. Start writing. After blog. You know, when God tells you to do something, the first thing the devil will tell you is that there are many people doing it. But your name is not Legion. You are a person. God saw them and yet he inspired you. You know why? Because liberals are few. 
Oh, yes. When God said, go and start a church, I, I said, I'm not going to start a church. I don't want to start a church. I, I want to, oh, it, I, let me tell you, I want to be able to decide that I don't want to go to church on a Sunday morning. And I can't decide that as the head of a church. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There's, there's a way the devil makes sleep sweet on Sunday morning. You don't know. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So I want to be able to decide the day I'm not. Well, I can't decide the day I'm not going to church. Even my angels will say, oh, it's, are you fine? So because you have the question. There are so many people like, I can't join, I can't. God said, that is your calling. Go there. There are pastors and apostles seated here. They are wearing jeans. Does jeans stop calling? You that you will preach. <laughs> Tell her the boss, say, you don't know what's going on. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Um, let me start trying to tie this down. There is something consistent with great people. There is something consistent with great people. If what I'm about to mention now, you can see this straight in your life, it is because you are doing something great. Go on, go on, write down what I want to tell you. Anyone who is doing something great, there's something. Con there is always a moment in the life of great people that every great thing they are doing looks like rubbish. Where they will look at it and say, it's nonsense. What am I doing? Everything. All the exploits. Others have seen it, but they can't see it. They can't see it. That's why Elijah said, how am I better than my forefathers? What's the Elijah compared to his forefathers, the gap is wide. Look at your life. I say, what's special about me? What's special about me? One of the things great men must fight well is discouragement. That is what the devil used to afflict great minds. You look at their life. And what they can just see somebody is doing mighty things. We'll just be kind. We'll just be kind. I'm backward. I'm behind. I've not done anything. I've not done much. And the devil starts bringing comparison. Look at Bolu. Look at Tayo. Look at their life. See how well they are doing. And what you don't know is that you are doing far better. If you were not, the devil will not speak. And sometimes you are envying those who will later come to learn from you because of discouragement. Oh yes. There are days you'll be happy. There are days you are glad. There are days you feel you are doing it. But there are days you, will, you cannot find any record. There are days you look back and wonder, what have I done with my life? What have I done with my life? Oh yes. What have I done with my life? Look at my life. And sometimes it's just one small thing that will make you think like that. One small thing. You're supposed to go out with a friend. Then the friend just disappointed, didn't come. Then they will say, you see your life. Why would they not disappoint you? You are, not, you are doing rubbish. Your life is zero. The devil has bad mouth. Your life is zero. Look at your mates. They've gone to two and so and so place. You, you are here. Say you are doing church. They will leave you behind. Oh, yes. When I started pastoring people, the devil would tell me, he said, see, every pastor lives a lonely life. He said, the food of pastors is disappointment. All the people you say you are leading, all of them will graduate and leave you. Nobody will remember you. You'll be known as a man who attempted but never got there. Ah, that was what the devil was telling me. And I was believing because there were reasons for me to believe. I was pastoring people who were progressing without progress. Oh, yes. And if you start believing it, you will start changing your attitude. And when you start changing your attitude, you will get into self-preservation. You want to now start planning for your own future. But that's not the route. God will take you on a route where he is the future. Yes. You, you want to say, let me keep lot. You can't do a lot with lot. Let me keep my lot. Shh. Follow me to a land that 
I will show you. Everybody that meets on the way say, hey, where are you going? Say, I'm going somewhere. Where? Say, somewhere. say, that's the guy who doesn't know his purpose. God never gives anybody the full picture. He shows you a bit of it. So you can depend on him till he actualizes everything. The process of following him makes you. Make something. Let me show you a scripture. Please be seated. Numbers. Numbers chapter number 20. Numbers chapter number 20. Look at this scripture. Are you being blessed this morning? Are you sure? Numbers chapter number 20. Let's start the reading from... Oh Lord, thank you Lord. Let's start reading from verse 7. Numbers 20 from verse 7. Lift your hands where you are seated. Say, I refuse to be discouraged. Come on, say it again. Say it again. Say it again. I give up discouragement. I will not be discouraged. You have more likelihood to fall into sin when you are discouraged. Oh, yes. You doubt God, doubt his promises, want to get out, say, I can't wait on him again. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, yes, quickly, verse 8 now. Take the rod and gather thou the assembly together. You and Aaron and your brother, speak, unto, speak you unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water. And it shall bring forth to them water out of the rock, and it shall give the congregation, all right, and the beast to drink, yes. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. Verse 20. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock and said unto them, Yea, now you were rebels. They had frustrated him to the peak. They had frustrated him. This is a very deep one. I, I don't want to go into... Oh, yes. Sometimes you have to minister to a generation that is frustrating you. Say you were rebels. But you must, you can be offended at those you are sent to. Don't pick that bait. Don't take the bait. Because the essence of your assignment flows when there's love. That's the essence. And anything the devil is attacking in your life is what should get the job done. If he's attacking your love work, that's what gets the job done. It is not the wooden handle of the axe that will fall. It is the axe head. The part that cuts. That's what he attacks. So what's the devil attacking? The largeness of your heart. Your joy. There's something there. He doesn't attack anything that is empty. He doesn't. Say, gather yourself now. You will rebels. Must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hands. And with the rod, he smote the rock twice. Smote the rod. Rock. And water came out abundantly. And they still drank. <laughs> Say, look at you, we rebels. More, more, more. Hey, the rock. Hey, water. They didn't even send him. And that guy was at a point where he felt he's had enough. He was tired. He was frustrated. He was pained. He was angry. Don't harbor bitterness in your leadership journey. Release it. Don't harbor bitterness. Don't harbor bitterness. Don't harbor pain. Don't harbor pain. I told you I'm going to teach a series coming up soon titled Breathe to release off pain. We are going on a journey where we are going to have a church where People can come to church and by joining hands together, the pain of many years is melting away. Oh yes, that's, that's where we are going. The pain of many years. And like I said, many, many people are wounded. Yes, you can't, you can't give love. You, 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 are, you are struggling because that part has been consistently attacked. If anybody come to meet you now and argue, the first thing in your mind is, what was what, the problem? What, what, what's it? You feel they are trying to hurt you. People compliment you too much. You feel, hey, before they will come now, not them, not them, not them. It reminded me of a story I watched online. 
of a stray dog that was picked up by a man and the dog would not allow them to care for him because the dog is used to a hostile environment already. Sometimes people are not receiving love because they are used to hostility. They are used to people hurting them. They are used to people taking advantage of them. They are used to people getting to know them only to mock them. Know their stories only to use it against them. Hold the hands of your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I genuinely look at your neighbor. I see that. Hold on. Are you seeing that people struggle to look into each other's eyes? Are you seeing problem or what? Look at your neighbor. Say, I genuinely care about you. Look at your neighbor again. Say, I genuinely care about you. Hold another neighbor. <laughs> Say, you are so important. Okay. Now tell your neighbor this. You are not alone in this world. I care. Let me say this to you. Hold on a minute. Anyone who is brash, who is careless with words, will be an available tool for the devil to use against people consistently. There are things the devil wants to say, but he can't say it in person. He needs those who can say it on his behalf. And there are things Jesus wants to say, he needs those who can say it on his behalf. I'm sorry, but I have to tell you, if there's anything I noticed about the temperature of this environment when we came in, is that there's pain in the air. And even me as a pastor, people suspect me. We see they check you out. Am I them? Am me? Femi Lazarus. And when you keep checking people out and expecting... You will expect too much and they will easily disappoint you. That's how to have consistent record of pain. Because say, if I see anything that looks like it, calm, I don't come out. And this fellow is just doing his own life, not trying to be like anybody, but is reminding you of somebody. Because we have accumulated pain. Imagine leading this kind of people for 40 years. People that because of meat, they were gathering to stone him. Meat! Suya! He went to tell God, he said, am I their father that you will ask me to carry these guys on my back? He said, these guys, God said, go and tell that meat, they will eat till it come out. Even God said, was tired. Why will Moses not be tired? Sometimes this thing no balance. God was God, God said, let's wipe all of them out. I will start something new with you. Moses said, if you do it, people will say that you could not bring them to the promised land. God said, it's true, I repent. That's the God of the Bible. He can just start saying, ah, it's true, it's true, it's true. God, 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 God was tired. God. The work you say you want to do, that you say you have joy, they killed Jesus for it all. You now say you are peace. <laughs> no, let's just tell you as it is. No dribbling. Do you understand what I'm saying? You have to get used to it. Moses had accumulated so much. Elijah has, he had, he had, had gotten enough. He said, I'm, I'm done. What's the difference between me and my fathers? You are not the same anymore. God has taken you so far. You know more than the usual. Is that clear? Never you look down on yourself. God wants me to pray for people who gave up on an aspect of their calling because of discouragement. Because of the nature of men. In Hebrews 11, 
when the Bible described the Hall of Fame of Faith, the Bible said these are men of whom the world was not worthy of. They wandered about in sheepskin in desert. The world could not recognize them. They, it's not a crime if they can't recognize you yet. I sat down in a meeting. Unfortunately, under somebody who was preaching and he killed everything God told me. I left it for two years. It took a while for God to tell me I was not the one speaking to him. Go back. The person can wear a tie and see shut you down. And I went back to it. The rest is history. I beg you in the name of Jesus Christ. Church, let's rise up. You have left something that God placed in your hands because of pain, because of discouragement. If you won't mind, if you won't mind, I, I want to pray for you. People have queried me that, Apostle, we've seen you lay hands outside. You don't do so here in Abuja. Don't. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. And that calling, you are going to go back to it. Yes. If you are here, please come out. Let me agree with you in prayers. Please come. Thank you. Um, can you raise me a sound? Raise me a sound. Yes. Raise a sound. While you are coming out, lift your hands and say, Lord, I pick it back. Yes. Start seeing yourself do it. There's so much about your life. There's so much about your destiny. This squad is not complete with you missing in the grandstand. We can't continue without you. 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 Continue without you. Oh, yes. Yes, that's it. There's a change of heart. There's, it's touching you. There's a surgery that is going on. There's a surgery that is going on. So much destinies are wrapped around you. And we cannot lose you. We cannot. We are not complete no matter what we are doing. We will be vulnerable. We will be prone to attack unless you take your place. If we are few, we will be launched down easily. You have a role to play. You have a role to play. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I, I, I take back. I take back. I take back. I take it back. I take it back. I take it back. I refuse. I refuse to be discouraged. 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 I refuse. I refuse to be discouraged. I'm just going to join my hands with you briefly. The power of the Holy Spirit will flow. And ushers just help me carry those you can carry. And those that can go back to their seat will go back to their seat. Stretch your hands out. So I receive the anointing for this new phase. I reject discouragement. Father, touch your children. And let there be encouragement in the name of Jesus. Encourage them, Lord. Encourage them, Lord. Release of the anointing of the Spirit. Once I touch you, you can go back to your seat. I join my hands with you in the name of Jesus. I join my hands with you. You are encouraged to do all that God has laid in your heart to do in the name of Jesus. All that God has laid in your heart to do is not going to move on without you. You are encouraged. You are encouraged. You are encouraged. Strengthen on all sides. Strengthen on all sides. I don't know why I see the operation of the spirit of wisdom. Strengthen on all sides. You are encouraged to do all that God will have you do. Hold up, please. You are encouraged. You are encouraged. In the name of Jesus. Hold up. You are encouraged. All that God has placed in your heart, you will do. All that he has designed you to become, you will become. You are encouraged. You are encouraged. Epa, epa. You are encouraged. Strength is administered. Strength is administered. Strength is administered. You are encouraged. Strength is administered. Strength is administered. You see it's clarity. Clarity. It becomes clear. Becomes clear. Becomes clear. Becomes clear. Becomes clear. 
that vision is no longer vague becomes clear becomes clear help her becomes clear becomes clear it is no longer vague you were raised for such a time as this you were separated spared for such a time as this for such a time as this as he prepared you oh jesus oh jesus oh jesus help of the lord in the name of jesus help of the lord you go back to everything god has ordained you for you go back to it you are not discouraged you are not discouraged you see it you see it you see it you go back to it you are not discouraged 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 in the name of jesus you are not discouraged strength is administered strength is administered you can see it again you can see it again you are not discouraged you are not discouraged you are not discouraged strength strength is given strength strength even the youth shall faint and young men shall be weary but they that wait upon the lord they will renew their strength 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 you see it again you see it again you see it again you are not confused you see it again you are not confused it's clear again it's clear again strength is administered strength is administered strength is administered strength is administered strength strength no discouragement no no strength is administered strength is administered strength is administered shakata balada bakati there is something about you Of the Lord, strength like a river. Shaka pale na mokotai, strength. Now listen, the anointing you used to see in those areas are coming back. Shaka pa, now stand behind them. Shake a pole at a bay, shake a boko pray takabatish. Strength is administered. Strength, 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 strength. No more discouragement. Same anointing as you used to see. You see them again. Strength, help him, help him. Strength, strength is administered. Strength, 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 strength of the Lord. Strength, strength, strength is administered. Strength is administered. Strength, strength. Oh, my God. 
give you all the praise. Can we lift our hands and say, thank you Jesus. It is done in Jesus' mighty name. Wow. Let's give Jesus a big hand. Thank you, Lord. Something has been released this morning. Something has been released. Something has been released. Become all that God wants you to become unapologetically. Don't be apologetic about it. Is that okay? Become whole. Become whole. Become whole. No discouragement in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Our story in the city of Abuja is similar to the story of Jacob, who said, By my road I have passed through Jordan, but now the Lord has made me two bands. You will remember how that recently God sent us to Abuja in what I will call the most humble movement. We came practically trusting God for what to do next and how he's going to help us with the words of prophecies he has given to us about the city and the armies raising. And guess what? 
God is doing just that. Recently, we have been seeing the move of God in the most unbelievable way possible, with His Word reaching the unreached, converting sinners to saints, bringing people who have lost hope in church. And now this has necessitated the need for expansion so that we do not fall out of what God is doing. Where we are currently is stringent for us with rules that will limit what God is doing amongst us. The gospel is free, but the propagation requires a lot of funding. We want our friends, partners, and everyone connected to our ministry to join us as we undertake this project together. We have the urgent need to expand. And we believe that this is the Kairos moment for us to do that. We are importing our own tent all the way from China and getting everything needed to fill that space and have a conducive place where we can have our apostolic work beyond what we are having now at the moment. The structure you are seeing on your screen is exactly what we are working at at the moment. Believe you me when we say that people who are blessed can be blessed much more when we have our own place. We want you to join us as we undertake this project. We need your support. We're counting on you and your generosity. We're working towards a project of 180 million naira in this season. You have the account details on the screen. Use the account details as God has laid in your heart. God bless you so much. We love you from all of us at Sphere of Light Church. Thank you for always. Hi there, God is raising for himself an end time army and this is the mandate that he has given to us. Truly the harvest is plenteous, but we need you on board as a laborer. This is a call to partner with what God is doing in this great house. To become a monthly partner with us at Sphere of Light Church and Femme Lazarus Apostolic Ministries Ecumenical, can you reach us via the number plus 234 -903 -095 -9735. To give an offering or to sow a seed, kindly make use of these account details being displayed. The gospel of Jesus is spreading. Thank you for being a part of it.